Okay, this is the notes for section 6.1, Reflection Symmetry. If you haven't done so already, make sure you stop the video at this time, go back and read that section before going on. Um, so, basically this section is, is looking at figures and the symmetry that a figure has. And we're going to do a lot with this throughout this chapter. But the first type of symmetry that we're looking at is what we call reflection symmetry. And, and what that means is that if you take a figure and reflect it over a line, that original um, pre-image and image will be the exact same figure. Okay, So basically, if you can reflect a figure over a line and have it look the same after the reflection as it did prior to the reflection, we say that that figure is reflection symmetric. Okay, so that's that's just kind of our the way we would we would think about it in terms of how we're going to define something being reflection symmetric and what the line of symmetry would be. We have that information right here. Okay, a figure F for which there is a reflection over line M such that the reflection over line M of F is F we said that the line M is the symmetry line for the figure. So in other words, when we say reflection symmetric figure, we're saying that we can take that figure and reflect it over a line and get the exact same figure back. Whatever line we're reflecting over, that will be the line of symmetry for that figure. Okay. So based on, on what we just talked about here and what you read in your section, I'd like you to see if you can just pause the video right now and see if you can draw th example number one here, draw three examples of reflection symmetric figures and then also draw in the lines of reflections for your figures. And then once you're, you're done, if you want to put, uh, put the video back on, I'll, I'll, put, I'll have three examples up here as well. <laughs> Here's the three examples that I drew. Um, now yours obviously don't have to be the exact same figures, but I drew uh, this one right here where I have uh, two lines of symmetry, okay, one vertical and one horizontal. And it really doesn't matter the direction uh, or, or how those lines come in as long as if I reflect that figure over that line, it's going to sit right back on top of itself. Or another way of thinking about it is if I fold that figure on that line, it will fold onto itself. Same thing I did here with a, with a pentagon. There are actually five lines of symmetry. That's what we call a regular pentagon. We're going to talk a lot more about that later on in this chapter. And then finally, uh, I drew kind of a moon type figure. And there's, there's one line of symmetry for that, which would be right through the middle of it horizontally. Okay? Okay, so um, next I'd like to take a look at, at any figure. It doesn't have to be a reflection symmetric figure. But one thing that we know about any figure is if I apply the same reflection twice on that figure, it will reflect back onto itself. So every figure can be mapped onto itself by applying, applying the same reflection twice. So if you look at this figure over here, if I take G and reflect it onto F, and then do the same reflection back over that same line, it's going to map right onto itself. Okay? So, or a, a, in terms of the statement I hear, have here, the reflection over L, following the reflection over L of F is F. So if I take F, reflect it over L once, and reflect it over L again, it's going to be back to where I started. Okay? This leads to what we call the flip-flop theorem. Okay? The flip-flop theorem just says that if F and G are points, and the reflection over L of F is G, well, then I also know the reflection of G is F. Now, we've already kind of talked about this. We haven't given it a, a theorem yet, um, but uh, we have, we've discussed that idea already. Okay, next I'd like to take a look at the reflection symmetry of two figures that we're very familiar with, and that's segments and angles. Okay, If I look at a segment, every segment will have two lines of symmetry. The two lines of symmetry that it will have is the line containing the segment and its perpendicular bisector. Okay? So if I look at example number two here, it says draw the lines of symmetry of the segment. 
So you'll notice the blue line there is a line of symmetry for that segment because it's the line that contains the segment. And then the other one is its perpendicular bisector. And you'll notice then that the red line there would be that second line of symmetry for the segment, and it is the perpendicular bisector of that segment. Notice how it forms a 90 degree angle here with the segment, and it goes through the midpoint of the segment. So if we look at angles, all angles are also reflection symmetric, okay? And the line of reflection for an angle it will always be the line that contains the angle bisector. So if we look at an angle, we can always draw in its angle bisector. And remember, that's the, the, the ray that divides it into two equal angles. The line containing that would represent the line of symmetry for that angle. So if the green ray is the um, angle bisector, then the line containing that will be its, um, its line of symmetry. Therefore, this blue line here would represent the line of symmetry then for that angle. Okay, a third type of figure that is also reflection symmetric is a circle. And we say that a circle is reflection symmetric because there are actually an infinite number of lines that would be symmetry lines for that circle. Okay? In fact, any line that goes through its center point would be considered a symmetry line for the circle. So at this time, if you want to pause the video and just in on your notes there, see if you can draw in three lines of symmetry for that circle there. Okay, so I've drawn in the three lines of symmetry here. Um, now remember, any lines that go through the center point would work, so that's all you have to do to check yours, is does it go through the center point and obviously intersect the circle on, on, on both sides. Then. The symmetric figures theorem says the following. If a figure is symmetric, then any pair of corresponding parts under the symmetry are congruent. Okay? So if you think about it, when we reflect a figure, the, the reflected figure's um, uh, vertex points are going are gonna to go to different places, even though it's going to still look the same. Okay? Okay, so let's take a look at example 5 here. It says this figure is reflection symmetric over the line SW. Answer the following question. So, so basically if we take this figure over here and we, and we look at the line of SW, that would be a line of symmetry for that figure. Okay, so what that means is that if I do that reflection, we've got to think about where those points go. So if I do the reflection over SW of this figure, what figure is it, is it congruent to? Well, it's the same figure, but we want to put the points in a different order. So S is going to correspond with itself, but T will correspond with Z. Y and V will correspond with X, W with itself, and then it's going kind of backwards in that order, V u t and that would be the figure that it would correspond with okay now see if you can answer part b of this question it says because the figure has symmetry over line sw there are many pairs of congruent sides and angles and diagonals some examples are as follows see if you can fill in these examples and then Go pause the video and do that, and then when you're done, uh, turn the video back on, and I'll have the answers there for you. Okay, so here are the answers then for part B. Uh, angle T would correspond with angle C, therefore they would be congruent. X and V then would be congruent, and then the line segment SY and SU would be congruent. Even though that's not drawn in, we can always draw in those auxiliary figures and they would be congruent because it is a reflexive symmetric figure. TU and ZY would be congruent. 
ZS and TS, and finally WZ and WT. Okay?